Hi folks, my name is Ben and this is the quick demo for my new script projection um, that does camera mapping in, onto flat surfaces in After Effects. A uh, deceptively simple script that you can do a lot of stuff with. Um, it was kind of designed really initially as a compositing tool for making light work of nasty long-winded things like floor replacements and tracking mark removal, that type of stuff. Um, it's also really good for uh, creating reflections in the new um, 3D stuff in After Effects. You know, if we wanted to track a shiny piece of text into this scene and then have it reflect the table surface on which it appears to stand, then projection's your tool. But also for doing fun stuff like, you know, motion graphics things like maybe crazy like parallax tricks, um, or even doing stuff like uh, tilt shift effects is, um, is made pretty easy with projection. But in this particular demo, I'm going to kind of show you the basics of um, some compositing and retouch work on this tabletop here. Um, this is our kind of floor replacement, if you like. And then in the second part of this demo, I'll just put a piece of shiny text in like I was just describing and get it to reflect the table surface. So here we have a nice wobbly bit of footage of some old school camera equipment, filmmakers gear of yesteryear. I've got that tracked already using the built-in After Effects camera tracker. And I think what I'm going to do first is remove part of this burn mark here. You can see this is a table with some years of experience behind it. It's got a, a, a wonderful patina including this lovely great big burn mark and another burn mark here. So first and foremost I'm just going to just start off a comp by just replacing this particular piece here. So first things first, I'm probably going to graft a bit of table from over here. I'll grab a bit something like that and just bring the old target size down a touch so we get a solid that's pretty much the size that we want. Let's do something like that. And I'll do create solid and camera. I'll do for starters. And turn that solid black because I think that's easier to see and I'm going to make it uh, translucent too. What I'll do is I'll give it a custom name. I'll call it projection one. And then I'm going to line it up and basically just sort of grab a bit of table from over here. I'm going to put the bit of table over there. So I'm not going to do this too carefully. I don't want anything to kind of take too long. This is just really for the purposes of demonstration, but it'd be nice to do a kind of halfway decent job anyway. So perhaps we'll grab a bit from somewhere like that. Come up to the projection tool, select the layer that I want to project. This will give you a list of 2D layers that are the same size as the comp. Make sure I've got the layer that I want to project onto selected and then hit go. Ping. We have now got a bit of table that we can graft over there. Hurrah! And so once you've got that, then you can just start to... Uh, perhaps I'll line up a little bit, a little better, move it down there. Just bring it in here. One thing I do notice is that it's quite the wrong colour. But I think we can deal with that. What I'll do first is just put a rectangular mask on the whole thing and just bring that in a little bit and feather it a touch. And then I'll put another rectangular mask over here and subtract with a jolly good big feather. Like a, oh I know, how big is this scene? 40 pixels, something like that. Maybe even a bit more. Blend it in. And then finally, just do a little bit of the old colour correction just to bring it in into line. It's getting a bit too saturated, so I'll just... Uh, as I bring the contrast up, but let's bring the saturation down all oh, a touch. Hey, I mean, I don't want to go overboard here. That bit here can also be maybe subtracted out with a two pixel feather on the mask, something like that. Okay, um, it's not going to win any awards for thoroughness or perfect compositing, but it might win an award or two for speed. That's actually a passable comp in around two seconds. If we put some motion blur onto that as well, it would sit even better in the scene. So I'm not going to spend um, too much more time sort of looking at that. 
what I'm going to do is move on and do a little bit of painting work on the surface of the table and to show you some more features of projection. Okay, so um, what we're going to need is another surface to project onto. So I'm going to now basically attempt, well, I'll explain to you first of all, basically attempt to get rid of these tracking markers here and this burn mark by painting them out. So let me just um, select the portion of the table that's about where I want it to be. I'll just blow the old target up so I get a solid of about the right size. Make a new solid. Oh, got a green one this time. I'll call that projection two. Once again, it can be black and it can be 50%. Okay, I'm going to deliberately position this in the, uh, in the wrong position this time. And I'm going to come up to a projection and I'm going to project onto that surface. Hey presto, we have another projection surface. But what a fool. I've put it in the wrong place. And I just want to show you how easy it is actually to kind of adjust stuff if you've put it in the wrong place. Let's uh, change your background color, that comp to black. No, it's blue. So now we've got it, we can see our overlays because I've turned the opacity of the background down a little bit. So now we can see the difference between our projected layers and the background because I've turned the opacity of the background down a touch. And what I'd like to do is just to take that second layer and kind of keep the projection the same, but um, sort of move the layer around underneath. To do that, I hit E and I come to the lock projection effect. I turn that off. And that will give me the projection in its raw state. Now I can move the projection layer around behind that and I can just resize it and get it into the right place to do all of that retouching stuff that I need to do. I'm just making sure that I'm keeping it in the plane. I don't want it to move out of the Z plane of the table or the track won't be any good anymore. But something like that, maybe a little bit wider where those two points are. Now another thing as well, when you've got a, a layer selected, oh by the way, and once you've done that, if you just turn lock back on it'll jump, so you can't do that. You need to come up and say lock this position, and there you've now got that position locked as a projection. And as you can see it's giving you a wonderful bird's eye view. More of that later. Um, for the time being I'm just going to show you the nudge tools. Uh, what you can do if you want to is just sort of nudge the projection around underneath the um, the layer like that. Uh, if you hold down shift it just does smaller increments so you can do some fine tuning. If you change to both it actually nudges the entire layer around in its own space, in its own plane. If you go into layer here and nudge the layer it'll ask you to unlock it first of all and then it'll allow you to sort of move the layer around whilst leaving the projection where it is. Pretty much what we were doing earlier on um, but just with slightly sort of finer control with these nudge tools and once again once you've done that you would then lock the position. Let's come into that projection and as you can see here we have our bird's eye view. It's a freeze frame at the moment, it doesn't necessarily have to be a freeze frame but um, um, for a lot of retouching jobs like this a freeze frame is actually uh, will do the trick. And for anyone who does any sort of retouching or tracking mark removal you can see straight away what an absolute cinch this is going to be. Uh, we literally just get ourselves a clone stamp and we come in and we retouch our marks out none too carefully because uh, this is a demo and it should be quick. Hey, let's even have a go at getting rid of this burn mark. A bit more difficult this one because it's right on the threshold of a kind of shadow. But I think we can do a halfway decent job in a couple of seconds, can we? Something like that. Anyway, uh, speed is the name of the game for a demo. And then what I'm going to do is just turn the uh, background back up to 100%. And as you can see, that's actually pretty good with a still. Relatively convincing. There's a part at the start, um, 
which you'll have seen, which is none too convincing, where this doesn't match up, but that's easily solved with a couple of, um, oh, well, actually, on that there, with a couple of masks. So we'll just put one around there, and we'll set it to be subtract, and 20 pixel feather, something like that. And over here as well, we can just sort of take those bits out. 20 pixel feather, and that should do the job. Now, I mean, pretty crude, but it actually does the job in this instance. And if you were in a hurry, um, you perhaps might do something a bit like that. You might want to work on that shadow over there a bit more, but um, you know, it's a start. Now, supposing we didn't want to do that, I'm just going to kill all this uh, paintwork here and basically show you how the our projection projects a moving image. When you project a still, you get a little F marker, and that's the frame at which the still is taken from. I can move that around at any time afterwards. If I put the F marker here, you can see the still is there, and it's actually bringing the edge of frame from the frame at 121 in with it. But if I delete that marker, I get a moving image. And you can see that when we come into here, if I just preview inside the bird's eye view, you can see that we've got a moving image. This is the moving projection. But watch my cursor. This mark here, despite the fact we're projecting a moving image, this isn't moving at all. Neither is this one. That bird's eye view is rock solid, despite the fact that the image is moving underneath it. So that's actually relatively easy to retouch too. The only downside is that where the frame edge is coming in here, you can only actually use the clone stamp on these tools coming from above, and that's a little bit limiting. So in reality, the best thing to do with most of these things is to have a combination of freeze frame and moving image. What we'll do is we'll put a marker without an F on to indicate moving image at three seconds. And if we put an F marker just before, what we'll now have See, so you can see which is which, F and then the moving image one, coming to that projection. What we have is a freeze frame at the beginning, which starts moving when we get to the third second. Now that's perfect, that's a perfect combination. And just to show you how flexible that is actually with projection, let's do something like, let's create a freeze frame here as well, just by putting an F marker on. And that freezes there, but when we get to two seconds, we want to project the moving image again, so we put a non-F marker. Or we could even put, I'll tell you what, let's put another F marker, and then we get the freeze frame from there. And then at 208, we'll put a non-F marker, and now we're projecting a moving image. And then at four seconds, we'll put another F or something like that. So you can see, you can actually stop and start this. Let's come into projection, and you can see we've got a freeze and then the different freeze, and then a moving bit, and then at four seconds, that other freeze there. So it's really flexible about how you can project moving and non-moving images. Let me get rid of those, and we'll just come in and, once again, very rapidly, just get the old clone stamper, come right to the beginning, and I'm going to get rid of these markers on a moving image this time. So this is painting a moving a moving projection. Something like that. Oh let's see if we can get the shadow mm, see if we can get the shadow in one this the burn mark in one this time. <laughs> no is the answer to that, not really. Better though. Better though. Yeah, could live with that for a speedy retouch. Okay, back into the main comp, and there we go. Let's give it a quick RAM preview. Not bad, not bad. And you know what? If I was being a really lazy compositor and I wanted to get rid of that without doing any paint work, I might even just grab that layer and scale, scale the fella up. How does that work? <laughs> oh boy, is that a cheat. 
still, you know, it will take a little bit of uh, blending in. It sort of works. You know, for a previs or something, if you're in a terrible hurry. But anyway, you can see the kind of flexibility that you get with projection. Let me just put that back to uh, where it was. <laughs> and there you go. Those two bits have now been completely replaced on the table, more or less invisibly. And even though I've been sort of doing a demo for you, uh, that's probably not taken much more than about 12 or 15 minutes. Projection. Coming up, how to get the uh, table to reflect in a piece of reflective text that I'm going to put onto the table. That's in part two.